and welcome back to another Artifact Corner. Today we will be looking at a beautiful clock that is in our dining room. The body of the clock is made from mahogany with brass accents and a hand-painted dial or face. The dial has delicate flowers around it with a larger cardinal at the center top. This clock was made in 1810 by a local furniture maker, Nathaniel Taylor. Taylor is a local to our area. Nathan Taylor was born in Peru, New York in 1765. He became a furniture maker and spent quite a bit of time working in Troy, New York. By the 18-teens, Taylor was involved in local politics and an upstanding member of Clinton County Society. He sold some of his goods at other people's stores in Plattsburgh, but his actual workshop was in Peru. He was also the postmaster in Peru for some time. Nathan Taylor passed away in June of 1865 and is buried in the Peru Cemetery. Let's learn a bit more about grandfather clocks. In the 1650s, Dutch astronomer Christian Huygen wanted an accurate clock to help him track the movements of stars and planets. Clocks of the time could lose as many as 15 minutes over the course of a day. Huygens attached a pendulum to the workings of a wall clock which meant that now his clock lost less than a minute a day, a huge improvement over prior clocks. The first grandfather clock was made in the 1670s and is attributed to a British clockmaker named William Clement. At the time, it was called a long case clock or a floor clock. Clements created the Royal Pendulum, which was 39 inches in length and took a full second to swing back and forth. This style of clock movement was a large improvement because it only varied by no more than 10 seconds a day. This clock was so accurate that a minute and a second hand could be added. This clock movement was now enclosed in a wooden case that was between 6 to 7 feet tall, hence the name Long Case Clock. In 1685, the first Long Case Clock crossed the Atlantic and came to the American colonies. About 10 years later, these style of clocks were being produced in the colonies. These new and far more accurate clocks were cutting-edge technology in the late 16 and early 1700s. Because of this, they were insanely expensive. Only the uber-rich could afford them. Like most technology, the longer it's on the market, the cheaper it becomes as production techniques improve. By the late 1700s, Long case clocks were becoming more affordable and therefore more common in people's homes. So why did these long case clocks become known as grandfather clocks? In 1875, a songwriter named Henry Work wrote a song called Grandfather's Clock, which became an incredibly popular hit across the United States. The opening lines of the song are as follows. My grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf, so it stood 90 years on the floor. It was taller by half than the old man himself, though it weighed not a penny weight more. Our clock case is in good condition, but the clock itself has seen better days and would need quite a bit of repair work to get it back in working order. The painting on the dial is still quite lovely and in good condition. We hope you enjoyed this look back at the history of grandfather or long case clocks. Thanks so much for stopping by.